Hello, floss tube. Yes, I'm having a bad hair day, but that's okay because if I try and put this off, we won't film for another two weeks or so. Anyway, I am Stasha, and this is the March and April video report. Yes, there was no March report because I was still on the high from Comic Con. We'll talk about Comic Con. And April, um, stitching? April? Was there any stitching in April? Oh, wait, yes, there was a little bit of stitching when. The Soulful Stitchers had the Lost Stitchy Bug Challenge, which I started, but then never posted my picture. So there are no stats for March or April because ah, I didn't keep any. And I didn't complete any of the stories that I had set aside for March or April. And I've decided for Mania, I'm just going to do an innovation sprint, which is where you just kind of do whatever you feel like doing and make sure you have something to show at the end. So we'll talk about that all later. But anyway, first questions. Stephanie Grams asked, how did I get involved in a swap trade group? I'm not involved in a swap trade group. The unboxing video I did with a whole bunch of the whips and all the patterns and everything, that was Erica Martin Gonzalez, who is a friend of mine from the Teresa Wentzler bulletin board days. She stopped stitching. She just can't seem to do it anymore. So she sold off all her stash, and those of us that knew her from the bulletin board days, we got to have first dibs on it. So back before Facebook, and before Facebook groups, and before Flosstube, there was this thing called Yuku, which is where there were bulletin boards, where designers had bulletin boards, and even before Yuku, there used to be other boards, but they were really hard to find, but Yuku was where a lot of us came from before Facebook. And I was a moderator on the Teresa Wentzler board, and I actually kind of still am, because there is still a Yuku board, it's just not very active, because everybody's on Facebook. So anyway, um, I knew Erica from the Teresa Wentzler bulletin board, and she had posted a Facebook page to sell off her stash, and that's where I got that huge box of stuff that I unboxed. It had nothing to do with a swap or trade, it was just people that I got to know. So it's harder to do on Facebook, but there are groups like Stitch Mania and Cross Stitch Finish Line and Soulful, Soulful Stitchers where you can go and get to know people and just start conversations. And yes, it's scary the first time talking to a stranger, but we'd all be, we're all friends in some way or another because we're all belong to those groups. If you don't reach out, you have no way of knowing if those people are going to be your friends or not. I have met some wonderful friends through the internet. And it's also really cool when I travel for work, I'll post, Hey, I'm going to be in such and such city. I know that so, some of you are there. And can we, get, can we get together and do dinner or something? And I've met so many cool people in real life. So anyway, that's how I got that, Stephanie. So um, some of you asked me for a better definition of scope creep. And was that really scope creep or a change in requirements? It's scope creep because I did not drop anything I did not change any of my Year of Whips requirements, so adding Celtic Heart to the mix and adding Fabulous Women was also scope creep because I did not drop anything out of the project. So the scope expanded without realignment, which is why I've decided to drop Fabulous Women out of my current rotation because it's not contributing to the Year of Whips. And besides that, this this is all we have done on it. You'll notice that I, she has a pearl necklace because I'm using beads there. And let's see, we have Chanel's purse here. And we have a couple of uh, the shirt got done, but nothing else. So since we're not working on it, might as well just go back in the bag until after the year of whips is over. And I am going to take it off the two snaps because you should not store things long-term on Q-snaps. If you store things long-term on Q-snaps or on frames, the fabric stretches. That's why you should also remove your fabric out of the hoop when you're done for the day. And you can see, even with the, even with the fabric loosened, got a little bit of stretching there. Got a little bit of... I'm going to have to iron that before I, before I put it away for good. But you can see how that just kind of 
if you if I had left that tight, it would have done nasty things to the fabric. And as it is, I'm trying to figure out what this orange thing is down here in the corner. I must have gotten something on it in the Q snap, which is why you do use grind guards, which I don't use. So anyway, I will iron that before I put it away for good. And the Q snaps will go back in the closet because I don't have anything I'm using Q-snaps on, and besides that, I don't like them that much. Um, so the next project, um, Celtic Heart, got a little bit of work. You'll see that I finished the heart cent the center heart. We're now working up on the um, upper right-hand corner, and the goal was to finish that in March. Yeah, it didn't happen. So anyway, there's that. Ecology, the goal, the story was to, story, goal, whatever, was to finish the tiger. Got quite a bit done on the tiger. You can now tell it's a tiger, but yeah, not finished. So <clears throat> that's all the stitching I did in March and April. That is not a lot of stitching. I'll put some comparison pictures at the end of the video so that you can see where I started and where I finished. So. But that's it. I mean, for March, I got a grand total of 1,084 stitches. That's it. So, you know, I got a new stopwatch, but I didn't do any timekeeping with it. I'm thinking I'm going to use Mania to just kind of restart, reevaluate, see what it is, why I've lost the stitchy bug. So anyway, though, before we go on, I want to talk about Comic-Con. I got this shirt at Comic-Con. And I'm dropping stuff all over. All of a sudden, one of the things I was looking for is not where it was supposed to be. Okay. So I was going to show you my bullet journal, which everybody was, in January, everybody was like, bullet journals are the way to go! And, oh, it was right here. Uh, yeah, this is, this is my April bullet journal. All of two pages like I've done nothing in April and March there's March it's a single page so um, if anybody was doing bullet journals are you still doing them why did you stop if you stopped would love to hear your would love to hear your experience with it but look I have a mania list in my bullet journal so before we go on to mania though and I just bumped everything. Comic-Con. This is how I spent Comic-Con. For those of you who are old enough to remember the original Highlander movies, this is Christopher Lambert. This is what he looks like now. And that laugh in Highlander, that's his real laugh. So I spent all day Saturday with Christopher Lambert. And I was either at the desk next to him, collecting all the money and do, selling autographs and, and uh, photo ops, or when we went to panel or went anywhere, this is how we went to places because I was short and he did not want to lose me in the crowd. So that was Saturday at Comic-Con. Friday, I was with Bonnie Wright, who is Ginny Weasley, and we were in the booth next to um, Zachary Levi, who is the voice of Flynn Rider in... in in um, Tangled, and he is also Chuck in the TV in the, te the U.S. television series um, Chuck. So he was doing hugs for a donation to Operation Smile. I think it was Operation Smile. Anyway, for twenty for a twenty dollar donation to a charity, he would give you a hug. So I got my hug on camera with, the, and you can see the donation there. So. Being with Christopher Lambert, that also meant I got to be with Adrian Paul, who is the Highlander in the television series, because panels were both Highlanders together. Stanley did not come to Comic-Con. He was sick, but he did a Skype panel, so lots of people got to see him there, and that was really good, and we just hope he's feeling well enough in September, September to join us in September. So there's the Comic-Con report. 
So one other life event that I wanted to tell you about, my husband and I had our 30th wedding anniversary. So we just came back from a weekend away and we had a lot of fun. And while we were there, he told me, well, are you doing mania? I'm like, I kind of forgot about it because I haven't really been stitching a lot. And he says, use it to jumpstart your stitching again. So we're going to use mania to jumpstart your, my stitching which means that my mania plans are not new starts because let's face it i have enough going on i don't need any new starts but we do have a, a few new starts but we're gonna start with something old so something old all my olds are Teresa wensler's because guess what are the oldest pieces on my whip list that are still cross stitch they are Teresa wensler's so we have fruit bellful this is as far as I've gotten on the pear block. Haven't touched it since February. Dragon Ride. Here's Dragon Ride. That's also my year of whips list, and I have not touched it at all, all year. Summer Carousel Horse. So Summer Carousel Horse. Summer Carousel Horse is being done on 40 count fabric over two. This is as far as I've gotten on it. I got one yard of fabric to do all four carousel horses. Winter is the only one I finished. You saw summer. Here's spring. This is as much as spring as is done. So there's spring. And here's fall. So, and yes, I tacked, I tacked them back into place because I don't store them stretched on the frames. If you store them stretched on the frames, the fabric stretches. So th those are my five old pieces. So, okay, we did five old. We're going to do five new as well. So, <clears throat> Mirabilia's New Year's Fairy. Except I saw Liz de Orsi's finished fairy and I loved it. So I did a, a color swap on them. So the dress is going to be black beard instead of the light. Hair color is going to sassy brass. Blue Beatrice in the wings. The wings are also gonna go with a lighter color instead of the dark blue so that's the blue beadboard that came with it and i wanted to do a little bit more purple in it as well so we have purple beads of course the silver the kind of greenish silver beads that came with it we'll see if those stay there for the wings we have mill hill 12. we'll still use the mill hill 11 on the dress for now because it's going to be a dark dark grass dress and then of course the silver stays and my Fitbit wants me to get up and walk around yeah not gonna happen because I'm filming so and then the fabric of course it's always swap out kit fabric I'm thinking I'm thinking snowstorm because it's got the sparkly stuff in it. Either that or Kiwi Illusions Cloudburst. They're both kind of gray, and she just struck me as needing to be more on a gray. And besides, January is gray. So, we'll put that all later. Next new start is Watercolor Heart, which is a kit by Shepherd's Bush. This is all silk and beads and a charm, and it actually has its own little frame that it goes in, so watercolor heart. Mirabilia's Summer Queen, except I took one look at those teals and said that is not summer. So teals have been swapped out for greens. So we'll get that started. And then the fifth start, well, the fourth start is Tiger Lily. And I have, I have a peach fabric to do her on, and I, with Joe Mason's help, I have kitted her up in silk. So, 
So she's all done in silk. And then there was one other. Oh, yes. Mentioned I, I'm doing three seasonal things, one for each of the three kids. And Light wanted to have seasonal fairies. So I pulled the Joan Elliott's because that's very much a spring. That's an autumn. Winter fairy is definitely winter. And Rose fairy is, is our summer fairy. Except I, I'm thinking she needs to be just a little more green and pink, a little brighter. She just doesn't seem to pop as much as the others. So I have the fabric. I'm going to start one of these fairies for light, whichever one kits up, because I have not kitted them up yet. So something old, something new. So the rhyme goes borrowed and blue. Well, the fabric for that's blue, but um, I guess you could call these borrowed, except for they're mine now. Erica started them. So I am going to work on five of my whips from Erica. We'll continue working on Celtic Heart. I will start working on Tempest. It's a new to me start, so it works for Mania. So there's Tempest. And Tempest is kind of kitted up in blues. So I guess he could be something blue as well. Mirabilia's three for tea. That's as much as Erica got started, so that's pretty much a new start too. Lavender and Lace is Queen Anne's Lace. And then another Teresa Wensler. After all, we met on the Teresa Wensler board. This is the Teresa Wensler Seasonal Fairies. So, and that was upside down. This is the Teresa Wensler Seasonal Fairies. As much of them has been started. So, we'll start working on those and we'll see if I know, we'll see which ones get finished first. These are the ones, these are the Joan Elliott's for light. So those are my mania plans. I know it's supposed to be one, one piece a day for 15 days, but I figure if I do two days on each piece, that gives me at least some work on it, on them. And one of the things that's been bothering me is why have I not been stitching? And it's because my tablet ends up down next to my stitching chair. So I end up playing stupid Facebook games and, and silly tablet games instead of actually stitching. So the goal for April is the tablet does not come downstairs. It stays upstairs either in the stash room where I film floss tube videos on it or it stays in the bedroom where I play stupid games before I go to bed. So we'll see how that goes. Hopefully I'll be able to get more stitching time in without the distraction of having the videos. The only trouble is, is I sometimes use it to play my floss tube videos when I'm working on, when I'm watching floss tube. So that's kind of where I'm at there. By the way, I just saw the Why We Collect Stash from Stitching Kitchen. That was very short, very brief, very to the point, but it made a lot of sense. Anyway, um, that's my plans for May. That's where I've been for the last couple of months. And hopefully everybody's having fun. You'll notice that a lot of my pieces changed up the changed up the fibers, changed up the fabric. Because after all, pattern's just a place to start. You make it your own. And you have fun with it. If it's not fun, why are you doing it? 